With Touch OC, you have the ability to create the MIDI controller of your dreams. And in this video, I want to share a preview of a lesson from my Using Touch OC with Ableton Live course that I just recently wrapped up. And in this lesson, I talk about creating what I call a basic tracks uh, control template, a basic kind of playback template that has play, stop, previous, and next, essentially mirroring um, my favorite controller, the Oakboard Mini. Um, and I show you in this lesson how to create the proper things, how to name them, how to assign MIDI values to those. And so if that's something you're interested in, if you're interested in creating templates in Touch OC, I think you'll really enjoy this lesson. Make sure to stick around at the end. I'll share how to see the full lesson, uh, the full course that you can check out later. But let's dive into that content now. Okay, so I hate to say it, but now that we've got the boring stuff out of the way, let's get to creating and designing our first Touch OSC layout. So I've got my dimensions, my orientation figured out. I'm going to be landscape. Uh, I'm going to leave it just so the default uh, size. Uh, I'll do 860 by 640 uh, to make it landscape. Um, I have my iPad set up as a client connected to uh, the editor network and using my computer as the server. And I'm going to do this so that um, I think it's just a little easier to show you as I right click and show you menu commands and things like that. Um, so let's uh, let's start this process and um, let's add our first control element. So go over to the computer. Uh, a couple ways we could do that. We could right click to add a box um, or I could click up here and say, you know, let's add a button. Now, if I want to delete an item, I could right click and hit delete or I could click on the item and hit this trash can here. Now, let's go back. Let's add a button because this is what we're going to be working with primarily. Um, and I've got this placed over here uh, again to the left hand side of this. And I'll show you, I went ahead and just cropped off through the, the magic of movie magic. It's not great. It's not perfect. But to give you an idea of what this actually physically looks like on the device, just went ahead and cropped in a little bit uh, there so that you could see uh, how much room we have left. Um, again, it's not perfect, but it's going to give you a basic idea of what we have there. Now, if I have this control, uh, let's say I want to copy it. I could go up here and copy, and then I could click and do paste, and that's going to copy that. Okay. Um, alternatively, we could right click and do copy, and then uh, we could click on a device and do paste, and it's going to paste on top of there again uh, to paste. We could also select, do command C, do command V, um, and that's going to copy and paste uh, our device, which is great. Okay. Uh, and again, anything we want to delete, we can just select here and delete. Um, the other thing I think that, that's worth noting, particularly about the editor toolbar, we can uh, scale up or scale down our screen here. We can hit fit to fit this to the screen, or we could choose one to one to basically see like this is the actual size of what we're creating, which I think is super helpful uh, when you're trying to, to get that into perspective. Okay, so let's start to creating this. Here's what I want to create. I want to create a, um, a simple um, like four button playback interface, essentially something See if I can find it. Oh, it's right here. I essentially want to recreate my Oakboard Mini. Now we've got two buttons in the middle here. Uh, we're going to skip that now, but I essentially just want play, stop, next, and previous. That's what I'm going to create for this interface here. Okay, so let's walk through uh, how to do that. Um, so let's start. We're going to right click. We're going to do a button here, and we're going to try to find a good size for this. Um, and again, I'm kind of looking at my iPad here to get a good sense of uh, what that should be. Um, that feels pretty good. And I'm kind of going in, I'm looking at my grid here to see um, how many in I should go. So we're two, we'll leave like three in and three there. Okay, so to give me some good spacing. Um, let's go a little bigger though, from where we are. All right, and we want this to be a square. So to make this a little easier, I'm gonna click on this and then uh, let's show you the computer. Uh, we'll go over to control and I wanna look at the width and the height here. We're just gonna make these even just to, uh, instead of trying to drag to get this, we'll just make it even this way, 260. So I'm gonna go back to where I have three. Um, okay, so I could see three there, I could see three there. Okay, so I feel like that's pretty good. Um, that's a really, really big button if you could see that uh that's man, that's a little too big i think but that's fine okay so uh we're gonna make this we're gonna make this play um so let's go ahead and change our color so we're gonna click here we'll go into control we're gonna change our color to make it uh green ish of some sort uh, what kind of green do i like uh, let's find something I like there we go that's pretty good okay um that's gonna be play 
and let's set our MIDI value for this, okay? So we're gonna close up control, close up document tree. Uh, we're gonna go to messages here. All right, it looks like we have a control change message by default. We'll just go in and edit that a bit. So we wanna go in, type control change. We're gonna change to note on. Channel, uh, this is what MIDI channel we want this to be. We're gonna leave this set to one. Uh, note, I'm gonna change this from index to constant, and then we're gonna make this note one, okay? Uh, velocity uh, value, we'll change this to constant. We're just gonna make it a velocity of one. It, this doesn't matter because we're not creating anything with it. We're just essentially gonna use it to control live, okay? Again, obnoxiously large button, but it works for what we're doing. Uh, next, I wanna label on this. So let's right click uh, and let's do a label, okay? Pretty easy. We're gonna put this right in the middle here, try to kind of snap to grid and line it up. Okay, that's, that's close enough for me. Uh, let's change the text on it. So we'll go to values here, we'll see text and change it from label, let's make it say play, okay. Um, now, I don't like the red on top of the green here. Um, I could make it bigger, I guess, if I needed to. Let's see if that resizes. Uh, is it making our text bigger? Uh, I think our text is kind of staying the same. So let's, uh, let's adjust our font and size, there we go. So I want to make this text pretty large. Again, kind of ridiculously looking uh, looking interface so far. Um, but the other thing I want to do, I don't like this red background because my button is green. So I want to remove the background. So we'll click here and let's see if we can find where we do this. Control background. We disable our background. Okay, there's play. Now we do have these little corner. This outline is set to corner. So we're going to disable that. So we'll go here to outline, turn that off. And now we have just a giant play button that I can't seem to uh, align, but uh, let's see if we can do align, center, oh, no, it does that. Okay, whatever. Close enough, close enough for government work. I think I'm happy with that. And I can use my arrow keys to like get this just right. Now, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, I wanna uh, treat these as one item. Other thing on this button, I think I'm gonna do an outline, I wanna do full. There we go, okay, I like that. I wanna treat these as one item, so I'm gonna select both of these, okay? With them both selected, I'm gonna right click and do group. And now as I move this around, uh, that play button is going to stay um, uh, together. So I'm gonna keep the text and the play button together. Now we're gonna take this, we'll take you back to full screen computer. We're gonna copy it, we're gonna paste, all right? And now we're gonna set up our stop button. So I'm gonna do a similar thing over here where I just want to line it up. So I'm looking for one, uh, one, two, three, and then we'll place it one, two, three. Actually, let's go. Yeah, that's right. All right, so we're looking for one, two, three, one, two, three. I think that's right. All right, I think that's right. Seems close enough, maybe. Okay, now let's change the text here. Uh, so we're gonna go, oh, I think we might have to ungroup this. Let's see, document tree. Oh, here we go, group two, button, and then let's go to our label. Okay, so let's change that text. So we're gonna go in here, gonna go to values. Uh, you see text is locked, we wanna unlock this. And we've changed this to stop, and then let's change that to stop, okay? Other thing I wanna do, uh, I don't like that this is green, obviously, because this is gonna be stop. Um, so let's find our color. Where are you, color? Not values, control, there we go, color. Uh, we're gonna click on this, and I wanna make that red. Uh, what kind of red do I want? There we go, that works for me. Okay, so there's stop. Now let's change our value for this. We made our first one, uh, note one. We'll keep this MIDI channel one. And we're just gonna bump this up to uh, note two, okay? And then um, now let's go back to our document tree and go back to our full document. So we have play and we have stop. Now let's copy stop. So I'm gonna do command C and command V and uh, let's move it. Okay, so this is where Obviously, I'm seeing that this is a, a little too large for what I need, uh, but that's fine. We'll, we'll adjust this and, and tweak this here in a second. Uh, so let's double click to go into here. Let's change our text just like we've been doing. We're going to go to values. We're going to go to text. Uh, it is unlocked currently. This is going to become previous. Okay. I don't think I spelled that right. Previous. There we go. Previous. Okay. Uh, let's make it yellow or I guess whatever color. I don't know that I necessarily need it to be yellow, but let's try for yellow. Um, 
One thing, I feel like the color picker isn't as accurate as I would like it to be. Or it's just really hard to like dial it in to get the exact color you want. So let's see what kind of yellow adjacent color I can get since I'm struggling to find a good solid yellow color. A little lighter, but that's more greenish. You know what? Gray it is. We're going to go with gray. So there's previous... Um, now let's change our MIDI value. Okay. So note three, and then let's get back, use our document tree to get back here. Okay. So play stop previous, uh, we're going to copy, we're going to paste, and we're going to put this here again. Uh, spacing isn't perfect. I mean, if you look at this, uh, everything's a little big, it's not awful. We'll bring play stop down and uh, we'll make it work. It's not awful. Uh, double click to go into here. We'll go to our text. We're going to change this to next. It's kind of e easy to get lost in all these options, but um, you know, be intentional. So there's our text and I think you'll be fine. Let's change our color. So let's close up document tree controls where we want this. Uh, let's go like a purple or something. Oh, that was a cool purple. Yeah, there we go. That works. Uh, now we need to add our MIDI value. So we're going to go to value MIDI. We're going to make it four and then let's go back to our document tree to get back here. Okay, so we play, stop, previous, and next. Here's what's cool about this. Let's go back to our super source so you can see this. Um, on my iPad, I have these pulled up, right, with my MIDI values uh, set up as well, too. So now let's let's uh, try this out. Everything should be working based on um, uh, the, the MIDI mappings that I have set up, okay? So let's go into live, and it looks like I already had something mapped. So let's do command M. Let's delete this value. Uh, I am connected using uh, touch OSC bridge, but whatever your connection type is, is what your connection type is, right? And by that, I just mean, doesn't matter if it's touch OSC bridge, if it's on the same machine, um, this process is going to be the same. So I'm gonna click, um, I'll show you both views here. We're gonna click this play button, we're going to press play on our device and that's MIDI mapped. Okay. Click stop. We're going to click stop on our device. That's MIDI mapped. We're going to hit tab to go over to arrangement view, click previous and that's uh, MIDI mapped and the next, and that is MIDI mapped as well too. So now let's get out of this. I want to tweak just the, um, the spacing and alignment of this. So we'll go like here, bring that over there. Uh, we need a, that down a little more. Need maybe that down a little more. Okay, I'm feeling good about that. And I'm using this grid to really try to line things up. Um, okay, that feels pretty good to me. Maybe they come in a little more. Yeah, that's looking even better. And again, what I love about this is I can then look down at my iPad and go, yeah, this feels right, that feels off. Uh, do I like this? Does this work for what I'm doing? Um, and that, that feels pretty good. Maybe, um, uh, it's fine. It's close enough. All right. I don't want to spend an entire lesson like you watching me try to get this close, but uh, this feels pretty good to me. Okay. So now let's go uh, back to um, our iPad. Let's get out of this. I want to like save this to the iPad. So I'm going to click this button up here to get out of control servers. You're connected to an editor server. Are you sure you want to disconnect? Yes. And what's nice about this is I'm left with what I was working on. Now I want to save it. So I'm going to click, uh, go into our uh, editor additional menu. We want to go to our save icon here. That's the box with the arrow pointed down. And we want to rename this and we'll call this simple playback template. Okay. We'll hit check and now that's saved. So now we have, let's close that. We now have a simple playback template. Okay. Let me show you over on the Mac mini. If I were to do this, uh, how do I save here? So let's go up to file. Again, pretty simple. We'll save. We'll call this simple playback template, right? And that's now saved over on Touch OSC. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed a look at that lesson from my Touch OSC course. In that course, I show you how to control Ableton Live uh, with Touch OSC, how to design and create your own interfaces, as well as how to control Touch OSC with Ableton Live. So I walk you through how to send MIDI commands to Touch OSC to change pages, to keep faders in sync. Um, if you're interested in Touch OSC, I think you're going to enjoy it. To check out that course, you could head to from studio to stage.com slash subscribe.
subscribe. When you subscribe, you get access to the Touch OSC course, plus every other course I have on the site, plus you get credits that you can use in the shop. You get access to the exclusive community, exclusive discounts just for you as a subscriber, plus a monthly call each week, uh, each month, where you can join me and the rest of the uh, from Studio Stage students where we can talk about anything. Touch OSC, Ableton Live, and I will answer your questions. Now, you can get all of this and you can subscribe monthly or annually. For more details or pricing, head to fromstudiotostage.com slash subscribe. And if this is your first time here on the YouTube channel, do me a favor, hit subscribe to the channel. I post a new video every single day, 10 a.m. Central, every day, Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. Central. If you like content like this, you'll love the channel. Hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.